Hey, welcome to Life Group tonight. Listen, right now, just show the person next to you some love. Tell them, I'm glad you made it. Don't know what you've been through to get here, but I'm happy you're here. Pull out those phones, send someone a message, say, hey, Life Group is going down tonight. If you can't get here, go to YouTube channel, type in Fountain Church, click on our logo, click on Effortless Change. You'll be locked and loaded and ready to receive the message today. They can go ahead and click that subscribe button and that notification bell so that they'll get constant updates on when we upload new material. Um, we're talking about effortless change, guys. And like we always say, when you look at it from the world's perspective, effortless and change don't go together. And so let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. We thank you for the ability to come before you and give you praise, glory, and honor, but to also receive from you freely. In Jesus' name, amen. So like I said, we've been talking about effortless change. And I'm going to go back to one of the first scriptures we use, which was Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I don't know about you, but I've been enjoying good success, and I've been enjoying being prosperous since we started this effortless change message. And it's simply saying right there that we need to meditate in the word day and night. Because we've been talking about in this um, week, starting last week, we started talking about God speaking to us. And I know that God speaks to all of us in different ways. But the most primary way that he's going to speak to us is through his word. And so we got to get to where the word of God is more real than the person sitting next to you. Like, I constantly can hear him speaking all day because I know what his word says. And I've been meditating on certain scriptures and, and I'm, hearing, I'm starting to hear his voice more clearly than I can hear all the outside noise around me. And if we would do that, we would prosper more accidentally than we would have prospered more on purpose. And so when we emphasize how important, how powerful God's word is, um, you know, you may hear people say, I've studied the Bible. I've read the one year Bible plan. I remember I started reading the one year Bible plan. I actually read through it one time and I didn't learn much because I was just reading it. I was not um, getting a clear understanding of it. And so you must, we must do what the Bible says to do in Proverbs chapter four, verse 20. And it says this, my son, attend to my words, incline thy ears unto my sayings, let them not depart from thy eyes, keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. He says, my word is life to those that find them. Man, that's good news right there. And so you got to understand that that phrase, incline thy ear, simply means that it's speaking of focus and commitment. And you must listen to God's word with your heart and not your head. And so for a long time, I, I listened to God's word from head knowledge. And because I didn't understand it here, I just threw it out the window or I didn't know that he was actually speaking to me. But when you begin to listen with your heart, you can comprehend what God is saying to you. And um, we have to place high, a higher priority and value on the word of God. We have to make it like number one on our priority list. I know like me, I get busy all the time. And a lot of times I take um, my busyness as a replacement to read God's word. And now I see that by the end of the day, I get frustrated and I don't want to read his word. So now you have to flip flop those things around and make God's word first and then make everything else under the priority of getting into God's word because he's the one that's going to give you wisdom. He's the one that's going to give you instructions on how to do things. He gives you better instructions and better details than anything on the Internet could give you, anything that anybody else could give you just by meditating on his word. 
And I, I tell you that um, th then when we begin to get into his word, we're going to begin to get better results. Because like it says right there in Proverbs 4.20, it says, let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart, for they are life. My words are life unto those who find them and health to all their flesh. So no matter how, how, um, how bad the situation is, God's word in our life is, is life to us, is health to us, and what it's going to do is oversee anything that you're going, that's going on in your flesh. And so I want to um, start this discussion off, and you guys can talk about this a little bit and just go and have a blessed week this week. The first question is this. According to Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 22, who is instructed to incline their ears? And also, where are you to keep God's sayings and why?